Sweetie, you remember when uh, when uh, Luke Skywalker was training on Dagobah with Master Yoda in his backpack? Of course. Those are good times. That was back when Star Wars was cool and Star Wars didn't suck. Ernie, what do you think of the new Star Wars movies that have come out since, like, the original trilogy? I'd rather not talk about it, Mr. Greer. It hurts my, it hurts my heart to think about what Star Wars has become. Yeah, I feel you, Ernie. And you and I are going to go on a journey today, and we're going to do some talking. And sadly, the way you feel about Star Wars is kind of the way that Mr. Gurr feels about the monastery. Let's go for a walk and talk about the good times and how we get those back for the next generation of fans. God, I love you people. Santa, he was one of my role models growing up. Yukon Cornelius, Rudolph, well, if there's anybody that's the poster child of the Island of Misfit Toys, it's Mr. Gurr and his buddy Ernie. So, in the spirit of adventure today, Mr. Gurr is walking through the wilderness in shorts with pink shoes, trying to make it to the library to return some books, because books are good for Mr. Gurr's brain, and also to return the movie Teen Wolf, because once again, we, turned, we returned the package that the movie came in but forgot the disc so Mr. Gurr is guilty again so sheepishly I will return the movie Teen Wolf in a Ziploc bag so the Ziploc bag with the movie Teen Wolf is inside my backpack. Ernie how you doing back there? It's freaking cold Mr. Gurr! I told you to put on some mittens. Yeah it's a lot colder in Nina today than it is on Dagobah. Ernie, we need tauntauns for this job. Anyway, I had a very interesting interaction. We have a new mailman that walks up and down the streets delivering the mails and I said good morning to him and he said nothing. And then I kind of called him out on it. I said, hey man, you know, I've tried to say hi to you several times. You never respond. Is everything okay with you? And he was like, yeah, I guess. So I hope he doesn't think I mean him any harm or any ill will. It's just that, you know, Mr. Gurr can tell when people are having a struggle. Like, everybody has a struggle in life. That is for certain. But some people wear it on their sleeves a little bit more openly than others. So, I wanted to ask the gentleman that carries our mail a, a few questions about uh, a few questions about doorbell cameras because if you think about it mailmen these days probably get filmed quite a bit every time they approach a house with a doorbell camera they're being filmed so how would they feel if they saw themselves on the internet from a doorbell camera would that make them upset? Would that make them feel like, you know, hey, that's not cool. I'm just trying to do my job and here some, you know, jerks are filming me with their doorbell camera and putting me on the internet trying to make a fool out of me or try to get attention from me. I do not want to make the mailman upset. One of my plans later in life is to apply to work at the post office because, hey, 
There has been nobody in the history of ever that has sent more stuff through snail mail than Mr. Gurr. So I feel like it's only part of my destiny to officially work at the place where the stamps come from. So I bet that guy, Benjamin Franklin, I bet he wrote a lot of letters. I wonder who's uh, written more letters in their lifetime, me or Big Ben. So when I uh, get to the end of life and get to hang out with Grandpa Bob and ask him, hey, Grandpa Bob, how many push-ups did I do in my life? The next question I might ask is, how many letters did I write in my life? I think I've done a lot more push-ups than I've written more letters, but hey. I bet both numbers will be very impressive, to say the least. But anyway, it's a long trip to the library. So less talking and more stepping. Now this is one of my favorite corners in the world. I don't know what 3PRW stands for, but I'll think about that on my walkabout. I wonder if Stefan is working today at Walgreens. I wonder who's manning the till at my favorite Dairy Queen in the universe. And quite recently, I received a flyer in my mailbox from this particular place of business, the Saucy Kitchen. Now, the flyer said that if I came inside and spent $55, that I would get a free bottle of olive oil. That's pretty good. I use olive oil all the time. Now, there has been a lot of businesses that have been in this particular location here on the corner of Commercial and Winnicani that have kind of come and gone, rise, rose and fell, I guess I should say, if I want to use the correct grammar. And I hope that the Saucy Kitchen does well. In my mind, I really was considering renting this building to kind of have as the business hub, as the face for Kindness Has No Limits Incorporated. So instead of coming in to get, you know, local products, natural ingredients, olive oil, balsamic jam, honey, Amish goods, art and more, people that came in that door were going to get Kindness. So. I'm curious to see if the people that run the Saucy Kitchen are interested in becoming a business partner with a guy that has nothing but kindness to give to the world. So there's only one real way to find out, and that's to go inside and ask. I like your scarf, Tommy. It's looking good. Thomas Jefferson, Thomas Brady, you got the Patriots colors going there. I respect that. Oh, mind if I pull up a seat, old friend? Now, I did talk with the lady that runs the Saucy Kitchen, and she gave me the thumbs up. So the good news is when I get home, Thomas, I get to uh, add another establishment to my whiteboard for people that encourage spreading the truth. There was a lady inside buying some stuff for some Christmas gifts. I think I made her a little bit uncomfortable with my questioning, you know, because most people don't like to be caught on film. And most people don't like to be put in the spotlight and be forced to speak in front of a crowd. That's just that's just the worst according to like 99% of people. So one of the reasons that you and I write every day and speak every day is so that we become amazing and better communicators. So I really like your scarf. I'm going to head to the library. I'm going to go say hi to Ben. Uh, I just wanted you to know that my $2 bill project is still in full swing. You know, now that I'm seeking new employment that's a little bit of a snag but you know what i think i'm still on track thomas to give a million dollars away in two dollar bills in my lifetime so i'll keep fighting the good fight and you keep writing the good right sir man i like that scarf 
Ah, see this big blank spot? Kind of like a missing tooth and a beautiful smile. I really want there to be a purple and lime green brain right there as a beacon for people that, you know, like the mailman I talked to today that really needs someone to talk about things. I think that would make the world a better place. My son, Garrison, is obsessed with these little lights that are being left all over town trying to make the world a better place and make people smile. And this plaque here about talking about how a dump was turned into a beautiful, beautiful park. Well, that's inspiring to me, to say the least. This place is beautiful. It's like an amphitheater. I kind of wonder what it would have been like if Mr. Gurr had gone down the road and become an actor, become a thespian, because I was in a lot of plays. I was in a lot of drama. I was in a lot of musicals. And there is definitely no doubt that Mr. Gurr is a character and likes to showcase that to the world. So I'm sure there's an alternate multiverse dimension where Mr. Gurr is a stand-up comedian and it's probably a multiverse where Mr. Gurr is one of the Avengers in the Avengers movie because hey if only I was a little bit shorter I think I could have pulled off Wolverine just as good as Hugh Jackman Ben it's been a while buddy Man, I don't know who's making these patriotic scarves for all you all, my superheroes of old. But man, they sure do look good. I think of all the founding fathers, if uh, I had to pick which ones I'd be BFFs with, it'd probably be this guy right here, Ben Franklin. You know, he never was a president. He was an inventor. He was an eccentric. He was even a ladies man, Ben. Hey, you know what? We all have our vices. We all have our, we have all the things that we probably regret in our lifetime. But you know what? I think after it's all said and done, people would say that, yeah, Ben, you came out ahead in the ledger and you definitely made the world a better place. So will they say that about Mr. Gurr? Well, I guess it depends on who you talk to. I know you tried to make the colonies into something better each and every day, Ben, and I appreciate that, and I hope that when everything is said and done, that the people that I served with at the monastery will say, hey, you know what? Mr. Gurr worked really, really, really hard at trying to make the lives of special needs kids better each and every day. And in the twilight of his career, he took that energy, he took that passion, he took that enthusiasm and strength and was focusing it on trying to make the monastery better for the people that he served with. Because if you think about it, Ben, if the people that serve the country don't want to be there, they don't want to do what they're doing, that's going to trickle down to the citizens of the country. And that's the kind of same mentality that I have been that, you know what? If the people at the monastery don't want to be there, they would rather be anywhere else but there. That's going to trickle down to the clients that we're there to serve, protect, and care for. So, Ben, you hear that noise? You hear that? Shh. That means it's 11-11. So it's time to make a wish. Well, I guess I got one. Does anybody have faith in Mr. Gurr? I know my wife does. Does anybody have hope for a better future? I know Mr. Gurr does. Does anybody have prudence? 
Not Mr. Gurr. Has anybody done good works in the name of charity? Yes. Yes, they have. But here we are again. Time to make some of my own music. <laughs> 